All right, so this video will be uh, somewhat quick, I hope. This is going to be the review of exponential properties, um, not to be confused with the exponential uh, properties of exponential functions, which will be a different video. So in this video, we're going to go back through um, the sort of basic exponential properties and figure out sort of why they are what they are and uh, sort of recall and make sure we're all on the same board with these things, OK? So first and foremost, just sort of set a standard or set a sort of place to start with. The first exponential property is the most sort of self-explanatory one, which is what is an exponential, right? So uh, I'm going to start with, so I'm going to do a numeric version and then the sort of general version. So let's say we have something like 3 cubed, uh, maybe not cubed. That's sort of a dumb thing to do if I'm trying to define something. So let's do 3 to the fourth. So what is that? That's just. 3 times 3 times 3 times 3, right? So the 4 is how many times we're repeating this multiplication. So exponents are sort of the, exponents are the multiplication, like multiplication are to addition, is just repeating that process. So in general, if we had something that looked like a to the n, uh, then this thing is going to be a times a times a, etc., And we're going to have n of these things. Okay, so probably think of duh, right? So this is just what it means to be an exponent. There's nothing deep here, right? So the next one we're going to look at, which again, um, this should be hopefully somewhat self-explanatory, fairly familiar. If we had something like, uh, let's say, 3 squared times 3 to the third, well, this is just 3 times 3, right? So that's the 3 squared times 3 times 3 times 3, this is the 3 cubed, that's just 3 to the fifth, right? Because I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, threes being multiplied, right? So again, in general, the sort of general form, if I have a to some power times a to some other power, this is a times a times a, et cetera, n times. times, a times a times, et cetera, m times, and that's just a to the n plus m, right? So the important thing here is I'm adding, right? So again, uh, nothing particularly deep going on here. It is noteworthy that uh, when you add it versus when you multiply seems to be one of those things that gets mixed up in your head an awful lot. But if you jot down a quick example, it's usually relatively quick to remember which one is which. Okay. And along that, along those lines, if we have three squared to the three, well, this exponential is just repeating this thing three times. That is just repeating the, t the 3 twice. So I'm going to have 3 times 3 times 3 times 3 times 3 times 3. Right, so this 3 means I have 3 of these blocks. Each block has two 3s. And this is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. So 3 to the 6. Right? And again, if I did this in terms of a, I'm not going to do out the long form, but if I have a to the n to the m, just like I did here, right? I'd have, here I had three blocks of them, so I have m blocks. Each one had here two, so each one has n. I'm going to have a to the n times m, OK? So power of a power multiply, power times a power add, right? And to be very clear, I will also mention it's important right here that the, the threes are the same base, right? If these were different bases, I wouldn't be able to add powers. Okay. So fourth property, if I had something like uh, 3 to the fourth over 3 squared, this would be 3 to the fourth, so four threes, 3 times 3 times 3 times 3 divided by 3 squared, 3 times 3. But now simplifying fractions, right? I can do 
Let me move to a different color here. I can cross out that three with that three, and that three with that three, which leaves me with just two threes in the top, three squared. But really what it was is I took all four threes and subtracted how many I could cancel, the two down there, right? So if I had a to the n over a to the m, this would be the same idea. I'd have n a's on the top, m a's on the bottom. I'd have a to the n minus m left, right? So I'd take however many were in the bottom, subtract them off the top, okay? Now, a good sort of observation there would be what happens if m is bigger than n? Does that still work? And the answer is yes, but it's a little less clear what it means because if m is bigger, then n minus m is negative, right? So that'd be like having instead three squared on the top, three to the fourth on the bottom, and claiming it's three to the minus two, right? And the question is, what does that mean? So you may have this memorized or not, um, but this is the first time where actually going through it is typically helpful. Um, so I'm gonna do that, and before I do that, I'm going to do some editing magic to erase these so we can go to the next one. So, abracadabra. Back. Ta-da. All right. So before I write down the properties, I'm going to sort of go through uh, how we got them, or how we get them, because I think it's easier to see it this way rather than writing down the property and then trying to justify it. So going back to our very first property, right, we had something like, uh, Let's say I wrote that, so let's make it an eight. <laughs> so eight to the zero is a, going to be a question mark, but let's look at eight to the one, eight squared, eight cubed, okay? So eight to the one, that's just one eight being multiplied, right? Eight squared, this is eight times eight. Eight cubed, eight times eight times eight. So I could calculate it out, right? And this is 512, that's 64, that's not the point. Leaving it like this for a reason. So eight to the fourth, this is eight times eight times eight times eight. So as I'm going down, right, as I increase, so let's say plus one to exponent, what does this do, right? So if I start at eight to the one, if I increase the exponent by one, what happens, right? If I increase it again, what happens? So Looking at this, we can see increasing it by one, I get to 64, but not caring what it equals, looking at what I've written, increasing it by one, right, it multiplies it by eight, right? So plus one of the exponent multiplies by eight, right? So if I'm at eight to the one, increasing by one multiplies by eight. If I'm at eight cubed, Right, I have three of these, increasing it by one more, now I have four of them, right? So likewise, if I think about going up instead, right, and instead of doing plus one to the exponent, I do minus one to the exponent, what's that, hap what's that doing, right? So here if I go up from eight to the fourth to eight cubed, what have I done? Well, I've, I've multiplied by one less eight, but if I'm trying to go from eight to the fourth to eight cubed, I don't want to say I've done less because I have to manipulate this somehow to get to that. So instead of multiplying by one less eight, the way I want to think of it is I've really divided, right? I've divided by eight to go up. So to go from eight to the fourth to eight cubed, I'm going to divide by eight to so this. Divide by eight. But that means if I'm gonna look at eight to the one, which is eight, and I go up one, right, I subtract one from the exponent, well, that's gonna take my previous one, eight, and divide it by eight. And that's one, right? So what happens if I do something like eight to the minus one? Well, it's gonna take the previous one, one, and divide it by eight which I'll just point out here is one over eight to the one, right? If I go up to eight to the minus two, well, again, I can take the previous one, one over eight, and divide this whole thing by eight. 
which is 1 over 8, right? Invert and multiply. So this is times 1 over 8, which becomes 1 over 8 squared. So you might notice that the negative ends up in the bottom, right? Not because it's just some magic rule that we have to like memorize, right? It's not this sort of thing that we've defined to be that way. In fact, multiplication sort of always had to work this way in order for all of this to work. The exponent had to do that in order for it to be consistent even at the other numbers, right? So this gives us our last two rules. So our last one was rule four, so rule five is a to the zero is one. And if you think about it, there's nothing really special about eight here, right? So if I used anything, say a, in fact, maybe I'll do this over here in a different color real quick. If I use, say, a to the one, this is just itself, right? So a to the zero is the previous thing, a, divided by the base, a. But a divided by itself is one. Unless you're looking at a being infinity. Luckily, we're not going to do that in this class. But that is a thing that you do in calculus, which is why this anything is zero, anything to the zeroth power is one. It's not quite true. And in calculus, you very deliberately dis, uh, discuss something called an indeterminate form, where if a is infinity, you don't know what it is. So for those of you moving into calculus uh, next semester or, or whenever, um, I will point out that this rule only holds when a is not some sort of infinity, whenever it's a normal number, some finite real number, okay? And last but not least, if I did a to the, uh, so strictly speaking, I do a to the n for negative n, but to be clearer, I'm gonna do a to the negative n, where n is a positive number, meaning if I have a to some negative exponent, this is one over a to the n. But this is the same, so I'm going to say like aka, because what I'm about to write is exactly the same idea. a to the n is 1 over a to the minus n. So all I'm saying here is that if I take something and put it in the denominator, I flip the sign, right? So the most normal place to do that would be if I'm using a negative so I can make it positive. But strictly speaking, I could do a positive and make it negative, right? So 8 squared would be 1 over 8 to the minus 2. There's not really a good reason to do that, but it's true, right? That is perfectly fine, okay? So this justifies the sort of thing to the 0 is 1, and the negative exponents is 1 over the positive exponent. Those rules, those really come from what they have to be according to exponentiation. All right, so that is all of our review of exponential properties. So the next uh, video, we're gonna talk about the properties of exponential functions, which is a different thing. All right.